Hello and welcome to another edition of Club 440, where this week we'll be talking about the games of 1977. We begin with Shoot for the Stars, aired on NBC at 11.30 Eastern, hosted by Jeff Edwards, and featured celebrity contestant teams, and they would call out a number on the board of 24, reveal a dollar amount, and then you'd have a have to each member of the team would have to decipher half of a popular phrase. And the content, the first team to score fifteen hundred dollars plays a special round in which the, the jackpot started at like fifteen hundred, increased five hundred for each day of each time it wasn't one. And they were they had a random selector. They were given one minute to identify come up with anywhere from four to eight two word phrases. And usually you had to do one at one word at a time to get your partner to say the phrase. <clears throat> and the show would later be revived in 1986 as Double Talk. This next show also had a revival that I'm sure most of you know as Press Your Luck. And as I said in my video about Press Your Luck, it indeed received a second chance. And that was the original title of the show when it aired on ABC in March of 1977. Jim Peck would read a question, and each of the three players had to write down their answer and secretly, and then he would give one of give, give three choices. And if you changed your answer and were correct, you got one spin. If you stuck with your original answer, you got three spins. The only other difference was between this and Press Your Luck was that there was no sustained champion. I mean, three different players every day, each day. In the spring of 1977, ABC decided to expand All My Children to a full hour and move Family Feud to 1130, and that began to put a crimp on the ratings, not only for Shoot for the Stars, but also the daytime drama on CBS, Love of Life, which by the end of the decade had pretty much been relegated to a late afternoon downgrade to a late afternoon time slot, ultimately was off the air by February 1980. So a month later, in June, NBC moved Super Stars to 12 noon, replacing the name that too, which had also debuted the same day, and inserted a new game show called It's Anybody's Guest, hosted by Monty Hall, who by this time had pretty much ended up his well run as host of Let's Make a Deal, and he would read a question and to a panel of five, and a, a pre-selected, rather humorous answer came up, and it was up for two contestants to determine whether or not the panel would guess that answer and whether they get it in one out of three, one out of seven, one out of five. And the, win, the contestants, first contestant scored five points, then had a chance to win a new car and 5000 in cash, by going through the panel twice with two answers. Well, one, after they went through the panel once, one of the answers would be eliminated. And the next challenger would be the contestant or the panelist who either won the most prizes or the most money in the prizes. And you say it on the panel to show games and then you were, you, uh, were dismissed. Next up, we have the better sex. Internet ABC replaced Second Chance, and you have uh, two six uh, two uh, me, oh, men and women, six men versus six women. Now, but instead of celebrity captains, you actually had co-hosts: Bill Anderson for the men, Sarah Purcell for the women. And it turns out overall that the men were the better sex, and which okay, so the show was canceled at the end of January. ABC moved the $20,000 pyramid to 12 noon and decided to expand One Life to Live in General Hospital to an hour. And then for at that point, it became love in the afternoon. And it seemed like ABC was about, for a number of years, was about to become the number one daytime network as well as prime time. But the better sex probably simulated that knowledge was king, Lady Luck was queen, which brings us to the revival of the Joker's Wild in the fall of 1977, which aired here weeknights from 1977 to 1981. Then it left the air, came back in the 
spring of 83 left again in the fall after a year 84 after about a year and a half also coming back on a, a day on a nightly basis was the newlywed game it aired at 7 p.m I actually didn't get on the air here till after the first of the year and I guess maybe it had something to do personal with my own personal pastor start petitioning members of his church to get the show moved to a less barable time slot like late afternoon but that's ultimately what happened and it aired it uh, aired until 1980 and also we have the Hollywood connection which is also a week weekday game a daily game show hosted by Jim Lang and I guess Barry and Enright decided, well, we don't want to directly rip off Match Game 77. We'll just put the celebrities in the center of the stage. We'll have the contestants off to the right. And and they had to predict the contestants score points predicting on how the contest how the celebrities would answer questions. It wasn't necessarily match game as that show was. I mean, it wasn't supposed to be a funny type of show. And uh it was also in 1977 that the University of Northern Michigan launched its long-running quiz show, High School Bowl, according to something I took notice this morning. But now we bring you to October, and NBC still struggling with May Day, or midday, excuse me, so they put knockout at 11.30. Artie Johnson hosted a quiz show. He had done many shows on him, I guess, sorry, I mean, he, Celebrity game shows on NBC and finally gets a chance to host a game show. And then to say the least with Tom Kennedy at 12 new. Now, CBS not only did not, didn't launch a new game show in 1977, but it decided to cancel Tattletales in November to expand the guiding light to a full hour. So there you have it. Those were the game shows of 1977. Thank you for watching. If you made it this far, leave your comments on this video and we'll be back here next week